Hello everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. Got another interview today for you guys, part of our summer series. We've got Asan Asajala on the site today, Lipscomb Men's Basketball. Asan, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Great to have you on. I mean, we'll dive right into it right here. Always like to start at like the beginning of a player's career. I mean, where's your st- where's your love for basketball kind of stem from? Um, how'd you kind of get introduced to the game growing up and, and what got you hooked? Uh, so for me, I had two older brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing basketball when I was four years old. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it was just one of those, one of those things I, I did because like my family did it, my brothers did it. And I fell in love with it at like a really young age. And ever since then, I've just been playing, whether it's a school ball, rec ball, AAU, until then. Yeah, exactly. And I, I know your dad played at Akron. You mentioned your two brothers play basketball. I mean, your brother Marcus actually spent time in the NBA. So first, one, I want to ask you, I mean, how big of an influence was your dad and your brother specifically on your game? Uh, so my dad, he trained me pretty much my whole life. Mm-hmm. So he uh, he's real big on like big men and different moves and stuff like that. And I learned a lot from him. Mm-hmm. Um, and my brother, my brother, he uh, he's pretty much like, like a role model to me. He teaches me because everything I'm trying to go through and I'm going through, he's been through. And he's just been teaching me about ways I can like, uh, get ahead of like my peers and stuff like that mm-hmm. and we work out while he's home right now he's in China playing overseas oh wow so while he's home uh, we work out he teaches me a lot even he watches my games during the season and he would like texts me after a calls me and we talk about stuff that could have done better and stuff like that I'm sure it's very helpful to have that support system as well and I'm sure it was pretty competitive growing up everyone in the household playing basketball and I mean in high school here, how's that kind of prepare you for Division One basketball at a school like Lipscomb? Uh, you, you said in high school. Yeah, so like, how did high school prepare you? Uh, so in high school, we ran a, a similar offense to what we ran my freshman year at Lipscomb, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much why I fell in love with Lipscomb because it was I wouldn't have to adjust too much. It was something I was already used to, mm-hmm. and I think the talent, like in Atlanta, I feel like there's a lot of talent, a lot yeah. of good teams. And I played against a lot of good players like Wendell Carter. Oh wow! Uh, schools like Green Forest, like nationally ranked schools, and there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like it just transitioned over to college. Obviously, it was a different, um, a little bit of faster pace and different things I had to adjust to. But I think I was real prepared from high school ball. Yeah, I mean, it looked like you were prepared well. You know, your freshman year, you come out, you averaged seven point four points, four point six rebounds. Do you shot? 56.5%, played 14 minutes per game, and you were an ace on all freshman selection. You also played in all 37 games. So, I mean, you looked comfortable out there on the court. How comfortable did you feel? I know that transition from high school to college can be kind of tough. I know, as you mentioned, you know, the transition is definitely different. Um, so how long did it kind of take you to settle into that pace of college basketball? Uh, actually, it, 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 it took probably – if we were to split the season into four four mm-hmm. quarters, it took probably like one whole quarter wow. of the season. So probably like five games, six games. Uh, it was I had to learn my role because obviously I was playing behind a very good big man, Rob mm-hmm. Marbury, and I was just learning a lot from him. And I had to like just my my biggest thing was learning how I could stay on the floor and, mm-hmm. and play more. So I became a better defender. I rebounded the ball better and just did the little things right. Mm-hmm. And over time, my offensive game started. I became more comfort, comfortable and confident, and it just carried over throughout the season. For sure. And I know coming into that freshman season, I mean, did you expect to get that much play time? You played in all 37 games, as I said, 14 minutes per game. As a freshman, I mean, when a freshman going into a program, it's really hit or miss. You don't really have an idea of how much you're going to play. Did you expect to play in all 37 games, have that much play time? Uh, honestly, because I was just coming off a, a torn ACL mm-hmm. because I redshirted. So mm-hmm. I, was, I wasn't I was expecting to play that much, honestly. Cause I, I still feel like I didn't have, like, 100% confidence mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. myself as far as my knee goes. And I talked to uh, Coach Casey Alexander that year, and he was just telling me how I could, like, stay on the court and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And over time, I just felt like I deserved it. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a good start for you. I mean – to say the least, you made a massive jump from your first year to your second year, your sophomore season here 
This past season, you averaged 18.6 points, 10.1 rebounds, 4 assists, just over a block a game. You also were efficient, shot 52%. Um, I mean, what the off season look for you to make that significant of a jump? Uh, honestly, it was just work, a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I know everybody says, like, you work out every day, but it was a lot of days during the summer, and even while we were there during summer workouts, or I was doing two workouts a day, three workouts a day, and wow. just working on, like, the stuff that I know that I was going to see, that I was going to be able to do during the season. Mm-hmm. And I, even my freshman year, I, I felt like I had confidence. But that summer, like, I've talked, we, we got a new coach, mm-hmm. Coach Acuff, that summer, and we talked. All the coaches talking, they felt like I could be like a focal point in the offense. Mm-hmm. And uh, like hearing your coach say that, it just built, it just it lights a fire under you. Mm-hmm. And that, so once you know that they trust you and they believe in you like that, and the, and the rest was just history as a sport. And then once preseason came, I was just ready, feeling comfortable. And then the season came, it was just all up and going. Yeah, you were extremely consistent the entire year in double digits. 29 out of your 31 games that you played you also had 15 double doubles so i mean course of a college season it's a long season how do you stay that consistent over the course of the year uh my, my biggest thing was just, just doing what i can doing the best i could and just mm-hmm. give it 100 percent. because um we started off the season a little rough we went on i know we was we had a under 500 record for a little mm-hmm. while and we we lost a few games in conference, the first half of conference play. Mm-hmm. But I just I just felt like as the season went on, I just got to give more and more and more. And eventually towards the end, it just uh, it just got better and better. And mm-hmm. When you have those games, like in the quarterfinals where I scored 40. Yeah. It's just some games just, uh, I just had, I knew I had to do it. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, I mean, there. we see a lot of big men on limited minutes, so to speak, but you were averaging 30 minutes per game this past season. Um, I mean, obviously, big men, you know, they're crashing the glass most of the time, one of the more exerting parts of the game. Um, How did you have the stamina just to play 30 minutes night in, night out? I mean, is that off-season training? Is that just getting in the rhythm of the season? I mean, how did you manage to do that? Because we don't see a lot of big men that can consistently average 30 minutes a night on the floor, usually with centers, with big men. It's it's usually a split fo- floor between a couple guys, maybe three guys, um, coming off the bench and the starter as well. Yeah. So my coach told me before the season started that he would he wanted me to play uh, like around that I'm, those minutes, like thirty two minutes a game, mm-hmm. and he just wanted me to get in the best shape as possible, not only for college, but hopefully if I get to go play pro or anywhere. Yeah. And just so it, a lot of that came from the preseason conditioning that we were doing. And and just in practice, when we went up and down a lot, Mm -hmm. there's a bunch of reps and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you guys had a really good season this past year. Um, I know you started off a little shaky, as you you mentioned, but it ended up being a great season. And I know you briefly touched upon this, the ASUN tournament uh, in the quarterfinal against Florida Gulf Coast. I'm sure you're sick of everybody asking you about this game. You had 40 points, 14 rebounds. How do you get locked in in a game like that? Uh, how's that atmosphere in a tournament game when you're just clicking on all cylinders? I mean, you're you're in your sophomore season at this point. You know, you're you're fairly new to college basketball. You know, you're not even an upperclassman. You get this locked in on the big stage. How was that, and how'd you do it? Uh, so we we knew that like obviously it's a playoff game. No one wants to go home. Yeah. So we knew no matter what their seeding was, we was a three seed, and I believe there was like an eight or a seven. Mm-hmm. We knew that they wasn't gonna come and play hard, but my biggest thing was I I didn't want to go home the first round. Mm-hmm. That that no one wants to go home the first round. And uh, the way they was playing us, so during the conference play, a lot of teams like doubled me and forced mm-hmm. me to pass out. The way they was playing us was one on one the whole game. Wow. Um, and once we realized that, we just realized like why like go away from it if we can get consistent buggies down there. Mm-hmm. And we thought they were going to adjust after halftime, but they continued to play us the same way. So it wasn't even like I didn't even notice I had that many points. It was just just playing basketball, honestly. And just, mm-hmm. I just didn't want to lose. So I just did everything I could, played as hard as I can. And yeah, I mean, you certainly, like that. certainly helped your team to the win there. Um, definitely led the way, led the troops in that game right there. And I mean, you're coming off a good season, not only personally, but just as a team. 
you guys are still pretty young. Ton of potential for this upcoming season. You're entering your junior year here. I mean, what are you kind of looking forward to this season with Lipscomb? Not only for yourself, but what are some team goals that you guys just have all together? Uh, so like like you like you mentioned, we we're, we're a little young, but mm-hmm. I feel like the young guys got some good experience. Yeah, last year, and we're bringing in some good players this year. Honestly, I feel like we our goal is probably be to win the conference for sure mm-hmm. and go go to the tournament. Um, and and uh, non conference, we want to win win a lot of those games, mm-hmm. uh, knock off some high majors. You know, mm-hmm. and I think we have like a good enough team to do it for sure. For sure, yeah, I think you guys are pretty underrated kind of flew under the radar last season had a great year and i think you guys can definitely build off that this year i mean to kind of wrap things up here i always like to end on two questions first one being one you kind of got to have fun with here second one being one that kind of makes you think a little bit um first one here if you could sit down and have lunch with any nba player past or present dead or alive who would it be and why uh who would it be honestly uh, I probably not if anybody else would probably say this answer, but it would be Kawhi Leonard for me. Actually, go. that's one of that's one of my favorite players. There I like how uh, he controls his emotions during the game mm-hmm. and he just plays hard. I like that. And it's just yeah. like the way he plays is so different than a lot of other players mm-hmm. or a lot of other superstars. He just gets the job done. And I, exactly. I always respect that. Exactly. Yeah. Great on both sides of the floor, and he off the court seems pretty humble. Doesn't really like to take up the spotlight, even though. On the floor, he is in the spotlight, but, you know, you hear very little about him off the floor, social media-wise, stuff like that. So Kawhi is definitely a really good choice. And then the final question here, I mean, going to make you think a little bit, but so far in your basketball career, I know you said you started when you were four years old. So from four years old up to the present day, have there been any moments in your basketball career or memories that have really stood out to you, kind of been a defining point in your career maybe a turning point or just like a memorable moment that that really has stuck with you to this day uh yeah for sure uh, mm-hmm. so my junior year at north clayton mm-hmm. we was playing in a christmas tournament and uh before that i would say i mean i had a few college interests and like mm-hmm. offers but I, I didn't feel like i was like you know like mainstream like everyone's talking about me and stuff like that mm-hmm. um but our school, we got invited to this Christmas tournament, this Chick-fil-A Christmas tournament. And it was like some of the better players in Georgia was there. Uh, Miller Girl, who, who has Alter Gilbert, mm-hmm. Tucker, uh, all these good schools. And uh, I think it was the, the game before the championship game. We It was like super packed. There was a lot of people there. And I feel like that was a game that like I knew that, that gave me the confidence up until now that I knew I was as good. Mm-hmm. as I wanted to be, or I can be, I can be as good as I wanted to be. I, I think I ended up with like 30 some points, but it was just like on a big stage, packed crowd, a lot of important people there. And mm-hmm. I just feel like I just uh, played really well and showed that I was a good player. Yeah. I mean, in a big game like that, sounds like it was a big game. It seems like you kind of carried that big game gene over to college basketball. Obviously I know we just dove into your, your A Sun tournament, and not only that game that we mentioned, but you know your whole tournament was was pretty good. So um, clearly that you've kind of carried that mentality over, been able to perform in the big game. But entering your junior year next year, guys have a lot of potential. Best of luck to you there. Congrats on a great sophomore season that you're coming off of. Huge jump from your from your first year. So congrats on that. But Asan Asajala. Thank you so much for joining us here on the site today. Oh, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. No problem at all. We'd love to have you on again. We'll put your Twitter down below so people can follow your career path at Lipscomb and beyond. And then we'll also put a link to the Lipscomb men's basketball homepage so you guys can follow for news and updates. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on Edge Sports Network today for another interview in our summer series. Hope you guys are enjoying Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy, and as always, we'll see you guys next time.